Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released macOS Sequoia 15.4. macOS 15.4 Sequoia is available around the world at the same time for everyone on all macOS 15 supported devices. And this came in at a fairly large 6.24 gigabytes on my M4 Mac 16 inch MacBook Pro. And this released alongside many other updates such as iOS 18.4, iPadOS 18.4, tvOS and HomePod OS, VisionOS updates, and updates for older devices as well. However, at the time of this video, watchOS 11.4 is not out yet. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to the Apple in the upper left, go to about this Mac. And as you can see, it says Sequoia 15.4 and it has a build number of 24E248. And we have quite a few updates and feature changes here. The first thing has to do with software updates. So if we go in here, this is a small change, but if we check for an update, give it just a second here. Once it's done checking, this looks a little bit different. We have a little check mark that we're on the latest version and it says your Mac is up to date. And if we go into the mail app, we have the mail app that matches what we have on iOS now. If we go to show mail categories, you can see that we have some options with primary, transactions, updates, promotions, and then all mail. We can split this into whatever we'd like, turn it off or use it however we'd like. I personally don't care for it. So I turn it off and use the traditional setup, but you can see what it looks like here. And it's just like what we had before, or you can use it again with the categories. If we close out of this, the next new update has to do with Apple intelligence. If you're using Apple intelligence, it's now available in more languages. In English, it's available in India and Singapore, French for France and Canada, German for Germany, Italian for Italy, Japanese for Japan, Korean for South Korea, Portuguese for Brazil, simplified Chinese, and then Spanish for Spain, Latin America, and the U S. Another update they've made has to do with image playground. And if we go into image playground, you'll see we have a new style for sketch. If we go into this one here, we'll open it up, go to edit, and you'll see we have style. We now have the sketch style illustration or animation. So sketch was shown off with the initial release of Apple intelligence, and it's now been added to Mac OS as well. If we go into messages, we have an update there within messages. We now have the latest emoji to comply with the latest Unicode standard, such as a fingerprint, a harp, a splat, a new face. And aside from the emoji, Apple has updated the Syrian flag to the most recent version. So all of these are available now in Mac OS 15.4. Within photos, we have an update as well that goes along with Apple intelligence. If we go into photos, we're greeted with a new splash screen, talking about new collections, more utilities, featured photos and search cleanup and create. We'll click on get started. I'm in photos in favorites and you'll have filter here in the upper right. Like we always have, but we now have not in an album. This is also consistent across our collections and every other album that you're in now has the same filter options. Also, if we see down here on the left, we can go to memories and under memories, we now have a plus button. If you have an Apple intelligence supported device, click the plus and you'll be able to create a memory just like you can on iOS. However, this has been sitting for about two hours and not working yet. It says more photos and videos need to process to create a memory. Keep this Mac connected to power until photos and videos finish processing. So unfortunately at this time it hasn't finished processing, but you can create them just like you can on iPhone. We go down to utilities. We can now click and drag and rearrange this. So if maybe we want illustrations in the upper left or maybe recently viewed in the upper left, you can move it around wherever you'd like. The same is true with media types for long exposure. I could put that here, put portrait in the upper left. Maybe I want live photos over here. You can move these all around now. Now, if we go into a photo and edit it within a photo, if I edit this photo, we'll go into edit and under edit, we can go to cleanup within cleanup. We now have erase and retouch. So we have two separate brushes and maybe I want to get rid of the flash here on the iPhone SE. We can just click and get rid of it. Then we can reset it. And so we have two separate brushes. Now, if we go into this day, you'll see here under filter again, we have the same consistent filtering options. So it's really nice that they've updated it and just made it more consistent all throughout. Another thing that's great is maybe you have an iPhone you've plugged into a Mac that you have hidden folders in. You can hide those using face ID. And if you have that enabled, they'll no longer show up on the Mac by default. So you won't see them. If you plug them into maybe a public Mac or something else, your hidden photos will stay hidden. Also, if we go up to view, we have a couple different options. 
we can hide recently viewed and shared. We also have filtering options here where we can filter not in an album and everything is consistent throughout. Next, if we go into settings, we'll scroll down to where it says wallpaper. And if we scroll down a little bit further, you'll see we have a new wallpaper for radial sky blue. This goes along with the new light blue color that we have on the MacBook Air. It was available on the MacBook Air at launch, but it wasn't available on all the other Macs and it's since been added. If we go to add a new widget, go under edit widgets, under podcasts on the left there, you'll see that we have some new ones for library and shows. So these have been added and you can use them on your desktop or wherever you'd like. So if you want to utilize those, they're now available. If we go into the podcast app within podcast, the first time you open it, you'll see a new splash screen for add favorite categories or see categories in library. If you search on the left and as you start to type, it now updates in real time, showing things relevant to what you've typed. So you'll see nine to five Mac happy hour, the Mac rumors show and others. If you use the new passwords app, there's an update here. So if you put in your password, you'll now see a new indicator. If you're using two factor authentication, rotating codes, where it is a circle in the upper right and then sort of depletes the circle to let you know it's moving on to the next code. If you're setting up a new Mac for the first time, such as this MacBook Air M4, you can get to the point where you select setup with phone or iPad. Tap continue and it says looking for nearby devices and it finds it here for setup new Mac. We can tap continue and then we can set it up just like we do with our iPhones and our iPad. Scan the code here on the screen, it will connect and then set it up. So give it a moment and then you can walk through the setup process this way. Now, while I'm on the latest version of Mac OS 15.4, if we go into shortcuts, you'll see I have changed Safari settings. These are saved from my iPhone where we could save some of the settings. And if we search for actions, they haven't been updated here for some reason. So you'll see it says get article using Safari, but there's a new one that says get settings. So there's settings updates on iOS that I'm not seeing on Mac OS for some reason for things such as books and many other apps as well. If we go into the app store, maybe we'll go under an app here, give it a second to load under discover, and maybe we'll go into this one here, Final Cut Pro, scroll down to where we have reviews. You'll now see reviews that are sort of summarized by Apple intelligence. You don't see them on every app, but they do start to show up after a while. So if you go to see all, sometimes you'll see one that's summarized by it. Within the home app, if you're using home, it now supports robot vacuums that support matter. That's been available in iOS and iPadOS and macOS now with the latest update. If we go into our settings and then we go down to our settings for Siri, under our voice, we have American Voice 4. However, there's new voices for Australian. We have four voices total where we had two before. So we have voice one, voice two, voice three, and voice four now. If you're using Find My, Find My hasn't been really updated anywhere else other than it's now available in South Korea. If we go into Safari, within Safari, maybe we'll go to Apple. Within Apple, we'll go to Safari in the upper left, go to connection security details, and this is all new. We can show the certificate, hide the certificate, see more information about it with details and more. So this is just a new option here in the upper left. If you have a new Mac Studio with an M3 Ultra processor, they've increased the default maximum memory allocation limit available to the GPU on the M3 Ultra with 256 gigabytes or 512 gigabytes of unified memory. They've also improved the transcoding performance in Final Cut Pro on the Mac Studio with M3 Ultra, probably to use more available threads. Another thing is they fixed quite a few issues in this update. For example, they resolved an issue where certain external displays may not be able to turn off night shift. If you're using screen time, they fixed this as well, the same as they did on the iPhone with iOS 18.4, where app limits would persist before after a child uninstalled and reinstalled an app. This has been fixed. They've also fixed an issue where voiceover navigates elements in incorrect orders within music. They've also addressed an issue where a braille display may show an incorrect line when navigating lines with left or right arrows. All of those have been updated in macOS 15.4. If we go to Safari again and go to Apple's security update website, and on Apple's security release website, you'll see all of the updates released today. And if we go down to macOS Sequoia 15.4, it looks like there's about a hundred of these. I have not counted them just yet, but you can see how many there are from everything from doc, where it says an app may be able to modify protected parts of the file system. They fix this. The issue was addressed by removing the vulnerable code. And then they have the CVE number and who helped them find this issue. So you'll see quite a few updates here. There's a ton of them in this particular update.
So if you're wondering if you should install macOS 15.4, I definitely would just for these particular updates. There's about a hundred or more of them and I'll go through and count them a little bit later, but definitely for the security updates, some nice improvements and I've had no issues running it so far. As far as performance, performance seems to be pretty good. As you'll see, I'm scrolling through using Final Cut Pro, just working on things that seems to be nice and fast and battery life seems to be about the same as well. You'll see on this device, battery health is at 100%. I'm using normal battery and it's on optimized battery charging. On battery, I have it set to automatic for the power handling, but on power, I usually use high power. So this is just incredibly fast on this update. I've really noticed no difference whatsoever. Also, if we go to general and take a look at storage, we can see how much storage is being used here. So you'll see optimized storage. If we scroll down to the bottom, give it a second here, you'll see under other used and shared, we're using under a gigabyte. And if we go to Mac OS, it's using a huge amount with Apple intelligence, 10.58 gigabytes. So it's a pretty large install over 20 gigabytes. It's a couple gigabytes larger than iOS at this point. As far as anything else, well, that's it for Mac OS 15.4. If you've noticed anything I haven't mentioned, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below, and I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.